sir kinza is here okay thank you very much all right so first of all i would like to say thank you for joining this uh, test to coa project presentation okay so before we start the presentation i would like to remind the rules okay the rule the rule of this uh, presentation okay number one i will play your video okay i will play your video that we put one two three and four so after the end of your presentation so after i play your video then uh, all of you need to be live okay all of you all the team members should to be live Okay, after the presentation, because I have a question to ask. Okay, for this question, uh, maybe I will ask okay, randomly who I want to choose. Okay, whom I want to choose or whom I want to select the person to answer the question. Only one student. Okay, only one student. If the student can answer, it should be good. If the student cannot answer, that means it your marks will be uh, included together. Okay, that means. Uh, everybody will get the same marks of the presentation only. Okay. And also, yesterday I sent you the rubrics, poster presentation scoring. Okay. That you will fill your name. Right. Okay. So, based on these rubrics, I will evaluate your poster presentation. So, you can see clearly what is the content inside. Okay. So far, I already have marked your presentation. Okay. I have already marked. For your presentation except for the q a okay the rest i already have your marks okay all right so uh any question before we start sir we have to show our face or just 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 uh oh. just unmute us okay during the presentation okay during the presentation uh please do not open the camera but during the Q&A, you need to open your camera, okay? So that means after the presentation, all of you, four of you will be uh, in the camera session. So you need to turn on your camera, show your face. And then I will select, okay, each of one of the team members, okay? Any question? Okay, sir, thank you. Okay. So I think we can start with presentation number one. So the team members, please prepare yourself. So Tan Ying Ying, Kirvin Das, Misha Sifwa Sagar, Wonderful Shama Kate. Please available yourself. Okay, we come back because we have a problem previously, the connection interruption. Okay, uh, Tan Ying Ying, can you make sure all your members are ready? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So we can start now. A very good day to everyone. Today, our group is going to present about brief study on deep learning based detection and analysis of COVID 19. My name is Tan Yin Yin, and these are my group members, Maisha, Kirvin, and Wonderful. So now I'll pass to Wonderful to start the abstract. All right, thank you. Uh, COVID-19 is rapidly spreading disease, which only not affects humans, but also animals. The daily life of human beings, their health and economic uh, state of a country are affected due to the viral disease. A clinical study of COVID-19 affected patients has shown that these types of patients are mostly affected from a lung infection after coming in contact with the disease. Deep learning is the most successful technique of deep of machine learning, which provides useful analysis for study at a large amount of chest X-ray images that can critically impact the screening of 
COVID-19. This work only focuses on methods of classifying COVID-19 infected patients and does not claim any medical accuracy. Now on our introduction. As we said, COVID-19 is a severe disease and the issue uh, goes vast where a large number of people lose their lives every day. In the past decade, several kinds of viruses like SARS, MERS and flu came into the picture, but then they stand for only a few days, months, and not as far as a year. Whilst COVID-19 seems to be killing into the world for a while. Meanwhile, many more, many more predictions come into the picture, such as plasma therapy, x-ray images, and many more. But the exact solution of this deadly disease is not yet found. Every day, people lose their life due to COVID-19, and the diagnostic cause of this disease is very high in the context of the country, state, and patients. The novel coronavirus disease came first as a throat infection, and suddenly people face difficulty in breathing. Infected patients of COVID-19 are required to be in isolation and do proper screening and take adequate protection with prevention to protect, uh, to protect themselves from others. This infection is following a chain process that transfers from one person to another after coming in contact with COVID-19 infected persons, hospital staff, nurses, and as well as relatives. And the clinical facilities play an essential role in the diagnosis of the pandemic. Thank you. I can leave it to my next colleague. Next, related book. First, uh, a framework model based on capsule networks was proposed to diagnose COVID-19 disease with the help of X-ray images. Then the CNN model, which is the convolutional neutral network model, was proposed and applied on a collected data set of chest X-ray and CT images and received improved results. So another mo model, COVID uh, RE net model, was proposed to extract the pictures with CNN for classification. In this work, features were obtained by applying CNN and data on C, uh, SWM, SVM sorry, was used to improve the performance of classification. Then a deep based methodology was proposed for the detection of COVID-19 patients using X-ray images, which showed 97.48% accuracy with the help of different matrices parameters. A data set of X-rays and CT images from several resources was considered and applied deep learning and transfer learning algorithms to detect the COVID-19 diseases. After further analyzation and comparison, CNN-based algorithm, which used two different models, which are VGG16 and Inception V3, was proposed for analyzing pneumonia by using a chest X-ray data set for transferring uh, learning on CNN. SVM was further applied for finding better results. After thorough discussion and different methodology, three models, which are Inception V3, Exception, and uh, ResNet XT, was implemented and discussed on a collected data set of X ray images. Next is Materials and Method. Under the Materials and Method, we say as our data set, the data set of these works has been collected from Kaggle repository which contains checks, X-ray, scans of COVID-19, infected, normal, and anemia. This collected data set is not meant to claim the diagnostic ability of any deep learning model, but to research about various possible ways to efficiently detecting coronavirus infection using computer vision technology. This data set is further divided into training and validation set of normal COVID and pneumonia. In the training set, 1,345 is normal, 419 are COVID, and 3,632 is In the validation phase, 238 samples of normal case, 86 COVID, and 641 of pneumonia were considered for this analysis. At the time of the drafting of this paper, we had 567 poster and career view scans of COVID-19 infected patients. So the next is, Model formulation. Large amount of reliable data set is crucial in implementing a deep learning method. Collecting data related can be time consuming and expensive, and thus argumentation can be applied to solve the problem. Three different models were implemented in the study of provide better analysis. The first model is Inception Net V3. Inception Net V3 is a CNN based network. 
key players need to use instructional models which compromise the performance. The tested player with 1 times 13 times 3 and 5 times 5 performance regression. Doing this, we can decrease the number of parameters and increase the training speed. It is also referred to as Google Net architecture. So, figure 1 is the exception net fitting model. So, the next is exception net. It is modifications of inception net. In this model, the Inception modules are replaced with depth by separable configuration. Parameter size is similar to the inception net, but it performs slightly better as compared to the inception net. So, figure 2 is the inception net. Next is REST NTXT, is an exception architecture of the deep researchable network. In this model, the standard remaining blocks are replaced with one that leverages a speed. Transform and merge strategy used in inception model. Figure 3 is the rational X model. The proposed algorithm. So, in order to implement the proposed uh, model, the steps have to be followed. First is pre processing the image, which is reshaping the image to 128, 128 degree with a random rotation of 10 degrees and horizontal flip as well as zoom rate of 0.4 times. Next, apply images to the input of the pre-tained model and fetch out output of last convolution layer of the model. Next, flatten dimensions uh, from n to n minus 1. Number 5, apply a dense layer of 256 units for the exception net and inception net and 128 units for the rest NEXT. Um, next, Apply activation. Next, apply a dense layer for inference. And lastly, apply softmax for classification. Next, uh, the experimental results and discussion. The matrices used for result evaluation are shown as here. Precision equals to true positive over true positive plus false positive. Recall equals to true positive over true positive plus false negative. Accuracy is equal to true positive plus true negative over the sum of true positive, false positive, true negative, and false positive. The F1 score can be calculated by 2 times by precision times recall over precision plus recall. These are the experimental results that we get from the reference paper. So this is the confusion matrix. From the confusion matrix, we can get our Precision, recall, and F1 score, and also the accuracy. This is the confusion data matrix we get for the train data for inception B3. This is for the test data. And for this, this is the confusion matrix for train data of exception model, and this is for the test data of exception model. This is for the train data of ResNex model, and this is the test data of ResNet model. So from the data, it was observed that the exception model having the best performance among all the models as it has the highest accuracy. So the highest accuracy is considered using the test data. So in which the exception model having the highest, which is 0 0.97. So now we move on to conclusion. This paper presents multiple CNN models to classify the COVID-19 infected patients using their chest X-ray scans. It has been concluded that of three models studied, the exception, the X-ray net has the best performance. The COVID-19 scans had been successfully classified and it depicts the possible scope of applying such technique in the near future and to automate diagnostic tasks. Our references were based from several books, which you can refer to from the poster. Thank you. A very good day to everyone today. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so now uh, please uh, make yourself available. Yes, sir. So, turning you.
Cubinda, uh, Misha, and wonderful. Please make yourself available. I want to see your face. All right, so I would like to ask uh, one question, but this question consists of multiple sub question. So the question uh, I, will, I want to ask Wonderful. Okay, Wonderful, are you ready? So mute, uh, Wonderful, please make, please unmute your microphone. All right, just a minute. So I have uh, echoes, I have to get rid of that. Okay. Can I ask now? Yeah, so you can go ahead. Okay, so the question is, what is the scope of the study okay, about this paper? And describe clearly how computer organization uh, architecture can help to give the idea or any solution to COVID-19. That's all the question. Can you answer, Wonderful? I can try, sir. All right, so uh, based on the question we chose to, to do as a group, uh, the scope of the whole project or the whole presentation was to find how deep learning based uh detected and detection and analysis can help uh, in finding out how covid 19 um covid 19 related issues can be solved on how to detect and analyze the whole covid 19 situation so from my point of view i think uh computer organization and architecture comes in in the fact that we use several technologies like the x-rays involved and a bit of research which were conducted and some tests which were applied. I think these all need a bit of knowledge to someone with the computer architecture and something to do with computer related topics for them to be able to do a thorough research and conduct the tests in order to come up with the uh, given results which were there. Without such knowledge, I think it is quite possible to come up with such results uh, thoroughly and accurate. That's from my point of view. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Now we move to the second presentation. So all of you can deactivate your camera. Okay, now we move to second presentation. We can start now. So I want to see Suvin Teran, Pavintran, Givinesh, and Patman Pranav. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, we can start now. Good evening to Professor Dr. Good evening to Professor Dr. Ahmad Zahmi. Today, I'm going to present about OMT, COVID-19 pandemic, application, architecture, technology, and security. My group is conscious of four people. I am Poitrin, the leader of this group. My friend is Sweeney, Junis, and Batman. So I'm going to start presenting with abstract. The number of ongoing research show the adoption of secure IAMT applications is possible by incorporating security measures with the technology. Furthermore, the level access. 
2002, Hoffman of new IOMG technologies merged with artificial intelligence, big data, and blockchain offers more viable solutions. Hence, this paper highlights the IOMG architecture, applications, technologies, and security DXXO0 developments that have been made with respect to IOMT in combating COVID-19 additionally. This paper provides useful insights into specific IOMT architecture models, emerging IOMT applications, IOMT security measure X002 meds, and technology direction that apply to many IOMT systems. Next, I'm going to present about introductions. COVID-19 shares nearly 80% sequence identity with SARS-CoV. The results of so, uh, results of SOCOIT et al. 2020 even show similarities between some parameters for both disease, term of disease, mentality, and incidence. The existing methods and treatments are useful in producing COVID-19 therapeutics. Based on SARS and MERS disease experience, WHO has issued comprehensive online technical guidance to all countries on how to detect and manage cases. Internet of yeah. medical yeah. diverse and prevalent and are excellent candidates. These are use of uh, IOMT for health monitoring system provides real-time surveillance through the use of wearables, health monitoring service, wireless body area networks, artificial intelligence, and cloud-based remote health testing. So for the next is materials and methods. This is going to be presented by GMS. And one more thing I, wanna, I forgot to mention here. WBAN is also known as wireless body airway networks. Okay, thank you. So next, my teammate Jimenez is going to present about materials and methods that we have to use in IOMT for COVID-19 pandemics. Okay, I'm Jimenez and I'm going to talk about materials and methods. Okay, as you see there, there's the IOMT pandemic mitigation. There's four types of components which is application, architecture, technology, and security. So in application, there is seven types of design. It is detection, tracking, monitoring, drug finder, prediction, and record. But in architecture, there's three types of layers, five layers, four layers, and three layers. In technology, there is device, big data, artificial, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. In security, there is blockchain, uh, not blockchain, confidentiality, integrity, availability, and authenticity. So next, uh, Vishnu will talk about application for COVID-19. Okay, so my, present, my part of the presentation is for uh, application of IOMT for COVID-19. Uh, so this comes more towards the practical application of it. Now, the scalability of IoT, it supports the monitoring of large number of patients from their homes or from hospitals. And now, as we know, especially during these times when doctors and nurses are in short supply and they're extremely overworked, uh, IoMT can be extremely practical when applied to monitoring hospitals. Uh, now, their biometric measurements, such as blood pressure and heartbeat, may be transmitted to the cloud for analysis without exposing health workers to the infection. Now, as we know, doctors have a high mortality rate when it comes to COVID-19 because of how uh, the vir viral load in them is quite high. And so this high doctor mortality will create a negative feedback loop of less patients having less medical care and more, more, more mortality rate for patients. To prevent this, we can apply IOMT to prevent doctors from uh, getting infected themselves. Now, an, an additional uh, advantage of this is that it has already been used in identifying and tracking the origin of an outbreak and ensuring the quarantine of potentially infected patients. Now, uh, and, and, and a, a prominent example is one year before when we had the COVID-19 pandemic during its initial stages in, in South Korea, it was extremely important to track which infected patient went where and interacted with who. And this similar technology was used there to track the outbreak and to nip it in the bud, to stop it before it spread and became too difficult to handle. Now, deviates are described as cloud-based cognitive computing and artificial intelligence robotic patient interaction. Now, that's my part for the application of IMT for COVID-19. The rest, that is, 
um, the conclusion and references will be done by I believe uh, Surendra. Okay, as for the last part of the conclusion will be done by me. My name is Suvindran and this paper consists of. This paper provides a comprehensive overview of the IOMT within the context of COVID-19 pandemic in terms of technology development, adoption and possibilities. And it also highlights the security issues related to the IOMT in general. Lastly, I would like to also um, give an advantage that if these IOMT systems included a security system as one of their main objectives in their design, this would ensure the higher degree of safety and privacy for humanity. And the last part for this poster uh, consists of the references, which are as such. Thank you. OK, thank you very much for the short presentation. OK, so all the group members, please available yourself. Sovin Teren, Pavan Teren, Gavinesh and Padman. Sovin Teren, Pavan Teren, Gavinesh and Padman. Where is Gavinesh and where is Padman? Man, where is Kevin? So, Jewish video is on, sir. Sir, I'm here. Sir. Where is Kevin? Sir, I'm here. Where is your face? My camera is on, sir. Camera is on. But I cannot see you. <laughs> Can you check your camera, please? Okay, good. All right. Now I would like to... Okay, can you... But man, can you make your microphone so noisy? Yeah? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, my question related to your project is, what do you think? Okay. What do you think of this uh, paper? Okay. Is it the security issue or is it the security is very significant to control the COVID-19, especially in terms of computer organization and architecture? Okay. So now I want to ask, Batman. Okay, Batman, can you unmute your microphone? All right. Uh, sir, I couldn't hear the question properly. Could you repeat, please? What do you think? Okay, what do you think of this paper? All right. So you need to think of this paper. Is it the security issue or is it the security is the significant to control the COVID 19 in terms of Computer organization and architecture. Um, well, um, this question is somewhat relevant to what happened last year. Uh, for example, last year, to uh, using IMT itself with the application of IMT itself, we could uh, monitor how COVID nineteen was spreading, and um, the, this um, is. Somewhat relevant to this question of security. So, sir, could you again please repeat that question? The my mic is really bad. I'm I'm sorry. Is it the security issue okay, is significant to control the COVID nineteen in terms of computer organization and architecture? Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. So also okay. So now our paper. Um, it has a comprehensive overview of IOMT within the context of the COVID-19 pandemic and its application of its technology. For example, last year itself in South Korea, this technology was applied to monitor the spread of COVID-19. And that can be seen as kind of an experiment which highlighted security issues related to IMT in general. But uh, 
um, lastly, it would also be advantageous to these IOMT systems if it included security as one of the main functions and the objectives of its designs. Now, since we've already had applications of IOMT, you know, practically we've had applications of IOMT and we've noticed its flaws, its flaws when it comes to security, we'll be able to um, say, modify these flaws to minimize these flaws and only get its positives, thus ensuring a higher degree of safety and privacy for humanity. To a certain extent, for um, greater monitoring, we'll have to give up a bit of security, but this can be minimized for the greatest um, benefit to all parties. We both want to prevent any such pandemics from taking place, and at the same time, we want to maximize privacy for uh, individuals. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So, can we start for group number three? Anish Varma, are you yes, ready? Yes, so, yes. Are, you, are your group is ready? Yes, sir. Where is the rest? Where is Apollo Sicharan? Yes, sir, I'm here. Mahmoud Ali Khalil? I'm here, sir. Yevin Tira Kumar? I'm here, sir. Yevin Tira is here, sir. Kinza Junhan. Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, thank you very much for the confirmation. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this. So the topic is related to computer organization architecture. We are going to talk about Raspberry Pi assistant face recognition framework for enhanced law enforcement services in smart cities. This is a group project and is given by our lecturer, Dr. Ahmad Anwar Zanayulkan, for giving this opportunity to present the project. So a group consists of five members. They are Jeevindra Kumar, Kinza, Muhammad Ali Khalil, uh, myself Anish, and Upala Sri Charan. So I'm going to talk about abstract. Uh, similar to a face fingerprint search system, face recognition technology can assist law enforcement agencies in identifying suspects or finding missing persons. Face recognition technology lets the police detect a suspect's face and compare it with image database of known criminals and provides investigators with a match of list of most similar faces. It is like highly efficient, accurate tool in investigating process. However, in some sensitive scenarios, uh, covert methods are required for the detection of suspects or missing persons without risking the lives of police with the availability of nano devices such as Raspberry Pi. In this poster, a Raspberry Pi and cloud assisted face recognition framework are proposed. A smaller size portable virus camera is mounted uh, to a police officer's uniform to capture a video stream, which is based to Raspberry Pi for face recognition, uh, detection and recognition. The proposed method uses bag of words for extraction of oriented, fast, and rotated PRIEF points from the detected face, followed by a support vector machine for identification of suspects. Proposed method is implemented on Raspberry Pi three model deep in Python 2.0 and is tested on various standard data sets. 
Experimental results validate the efficiency verifies its effectiveness for enhancing law enforcement services in the smart cities. We're going in this topic. There is going to be introduction, methodology, results, and conclusion. Each person is going to give you a brief explanation about everything, about what uh, this project is about, and give you a smaller brief explanation about the architecture of this design. And do, do a small test and give a small example results for you to understand the whole process. And finally, the conclusion. So I'm going to pass over to Charan to explain the introduction. Thank you. Thanks, Anish, uh, for explaining the abstract. Uh, my name is Charan. I'm going to deal with introduction part of this topic. In current situation, with the explosive growth of smart devices, a change in user preferences has been observed. Advancement in recent technologies like 3G and 4G networks helps users to connect the remote locations and enjoy a richer user experience with the widespread of use of social networking features. Law enforcement agencies usually encounter problems when it comes to public surveillance and suspect detection. Cheap and simple solutions for suspect detection is becoming increasingly challenging to ensure public security and to deliver security services regardless of time and place. Face recognition is becoming a multidisciplinary research, research area and it has vast applications in the field of security. The proposed system is a step towards modern public security solutions remotely in a, in a cost effective way. In smart technology has engaged an overwhelming number of researchers and it is slowly replacing other biometric security systems. This is mainly due to capability to record at a distance without interacting with the subject itself, making it convenient for a wide range of applications. The human face is regarded as a good metric of for identification along with other biometric techniques such as fingerprints and irises. Although other biometric techniques such as fingerprint scanning are generally more accurate than face recognition, Face recognition methods are advant advantageous due to recognition uh, used in real time situations. Recently, researchers used artificial neutral networks and conventional neutral networks, which provide better results in both face detection and recognition. Therefore, the proposed framework uses bag of words with ORB, which means oriented fast and rotate rotated brief feature extraction method for feature extraction, which is cost effective, thus making it more, more feasible for our system. The main original contributions of the work are listed as a novel Raspberry Pi based cloud assisted framework is proposed for suspect detection and recognition. Suspects are identified in video streams, which passively facilitate law enforcement agencies to provide better safety in smart cities. Second one, the Viola Jones face detector in, in incorporated in the proposed framework, providing efficient face detection results compared to state of the art schemes. Furthermore, the, the Viola Jones face detection algorithm is competently expensive, making it suitable for the Raspberry Pi based network. Uh, this is the interaction. Uh, thank you. So now I'll be uh, explaining my proposed framework. So the cloud facial recognition and recognition based on the Raspberry Pi itself is an advanced technology. So it enables law, law enforcement agencies so that they can easily and seamlessly identify various real suspects which are locally and mostly remotely in a really, really important way. So the, basically the proposed framework consists of four parts. First is streaming video in real time from the wireless camera to the Pi. Second, directly in the Raspberry Pi cloud with a reliable communication gateway for access to the face database. Third is the recognition and face recognition by uploading from the real Raspberry Pi into the cloud, which is very, very important in every sense of the word. And the fourth part, so we use the cloud to classify between different types of criminals and particularly place them into 
very appropriate categories based on the standard categories, which are generally quite large. So in this framework, which is the face recognition, it's, it's achieved with a, three, a simple three-step process. The first is using the Viola Jones algorithm for the real-time face recognition. The second is using the BOF with ORB for feature extraction for the facial expressions to um, extract them and transfer it to the cloud. Third is using the cloud reference vector machine, which is SPM for face recognition and the face of the fairly corresponding category, or that's, ba that's basically what they thought. And thank you. Now I now I pass on to Jivendra. Hi. Hi, my name is Jivendra. I'm going to be talking about the results and discussion. Thanks, Kinza, for giving a brief explanation about the proposed framework. The results and discussion is basically is about the wireless camera captures real time video and then streams it back to Raspberry Pi using Viola Jones algorithm. The face region is extracted from the video frame by frame. The Raspberry Pi used to acquire image from the wireless camera. The Raspbian is default operating software for the Raspberry Pi. It has all the features and compatibilities required for the project. Python 2.7 and 3.5 is part of the Raspbian operating software, so the installation is not necessary. Repeatability measurement. Point-to-point -point matching of two different images is measured in terms of repeatability, which corresponds to the mean number of points matched in two images. The phase 96 directory consists of 140 individual space images at 196 by 196 pixels. The difference is phase 95 and phase 96 is a change in the background and scale of the phase. The background is very complex. The frontend dataset is created by the California Institute of the Technology. And now I pass it on to go to experimental evaluation. The phase recognition system is tested on the benchmark dataset discussed earlier. The number of clusters used are 500 and 250 bit cross validation of 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, 0 0.7 for training and 0 0.3 for testing. The experiment was conducted on frontal images from phase 95 and phase 96 phase datasets. The results were then compared with the originals to collect the accuracy of the proposed phase recognition technique. The results also varied from the size of the clusters were altered or the parameters of RANSAC were changed. The problem with using SIFT on Raspberry Pi is the time and memory it took to compute these features. The only issue with soft points was that it did not perform in both gamma variation as well as with blurred images. Now I pass it on to Mahmoud for the conclusion part. So thank you, Jivendra, and uh, for conclusion. To sum up, we were able to successfully implement a robust facial recognition system that can be used as a cost effective measure to replace fingerprint and palm recognition. Raspberry Pi can significantly help law enforcement agencies in the identification of suspects in a cost-effective manner. This is an effective framework for simplifying the suspect recognition process. With this motivation, we have proposed an efficient suspect identification framework using cloud services and Raspberry Pi which can extract suspects face from the video stream captured by uniform mounted cameras from the police officers. Raspberry Pi not only provides an expedient ORB algorithm, which is significantly better than SURF and SIF, as proved in our experiments. ORB has also significant advances over SIF and SURF, as it is more robust and ideal for processors with limited ca uh, capabilities as shown in the diagrams, the performance uh, of the proposed system is further analyzed by introducing different noises and variations. In the future, we will investigate different variants of SVM and, and analysis of Raspberry Pi. We would also attach a display along with the Raspberry Pi and find a way to keep the, their cost down. So this was the conclusion. Thank you very much. Good evening to Professor. Okay, thank you very much for group three. Please available yourself.
in the camera. Yes, there is. Anish Varma, oh, you Anish Varma, Kinza Junhan. Who else? Mahmoud. Where is Mahmoud? Okay, so thank you. Right, so the next question. Okay, so this question, I prefer uh, Mahmoud. Hi, Mahmoud, how are you? Can you hear me? I cannot hear you. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, so the question is, in the smart cities, okay, in the smart cities, what is the main significant component to enhance law enforcement services? I repeat, in the smart cities, smart cities, what is the, the main significant components in order or to enhance law enforcement services? Okay, you have two minutes to start your answer. I cannot hear you. Can you please unmute your microphone, Mahmoud? Sorry, sir. My, my mic was unmuted. Okay. Okay, so uh, so basically, sir, uh, a smart city is uh, smart cities are responsive, intelligent, connected, and sustainable. They're made up of uh, around like maybe uh, a couple of components around four so uh we, we can say first of all sir it's uh putting data into work analytics because data lies at the heart of the smart city rapidly evolving technology and sensors are enabling the concept of a smart city from the devices in your vehicle to the sensors or on traffic signs so first you must identify the problem and try to, to solve it. Then, uh, then you put the technology into place. The, the, question is, the question is, what is the main significant component? The component. So, I didn't understand. What do you mean by components? <laughs> you are talking about what in your paper? Raspberry Pi, right? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of Raspberry Pi, what kind of the components, okay, what kind of the uh, projects can be done to enhance the, to enhance the law enforcement services? So basically, sir, what I was saying is not right. You are not answering the question. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, now we move to the next, the last group. Okay, please uh, deactivate your camera. Okay, for the next group, group number four, Lodka Prakasun, Navin Barma, Yogesh Warren Siva, and Parven Kumar. Please available. Yes. To talk. yes, yes. Actually, like uh, his phone was lagging. I think he couldn't like understand the question properly. So, is there any chance you can give one more chance? Or no, no, sorry, sorry. Because okay. the rule, the rule is there. I already said the rules in the initial point of this presentation, right? So yes, we must, sir, but... we must follow the rule. Sorry, sorry to say. Thank you very much. Okay, next question, Logra Prakasun, where are you now? Yes, 
Navin Varma, Yogeswaran Siva and Parven Kumar. Present, sir. I'm here, sir. Present. Okay. Can we start the presentation right now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, very good afternoon to Dr. Anwar and my fellow friends. Today, I myself, Parul Kumar, and my group members, Navin Varma, Yogi Swaran, and Doga Prakasan will be presenting on a topic called Drone-Based Network Systems and Methods for Combating Coronavirus D Disease. So uh, the first part, the abstract, will be conducted by Doga Prakasan, uh, followed by the introdu introduction, same by him. The architecture will be presented by Navin. Algorithms and operational strategies will be presented by myself. The simulation and outcome will then be presented by Yogis. And then I'll conclude and also provide the references for our study. So moving on to the abstract, which will be conducted by Loga. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. I'm going to talk about my abstract, which is based on my topic. OK, I'm going to start a coronavirus disease, which is, is a newly found coronavirus that causes an infection disease. It is uh, comparable to influenza virus and causes concern because of the fight, fighting levels of transmission and intensity, which has resulted in a global pandemic. It infected 24.0 million people worldwide in the eight months and killed over 24,000 people. Known as, and also known as an unnamed aerial vehicle, UAV, are uh, uh, proving to be ex extremely useful in combating the COVID-19 outbreak. Drone-based systems and COVID-19 pandemic condition and presents an architecture for dealing with pandemic events in a real-time and simulation-based scenarios are studied in this work. Variable scenarios are used in the push and pull data fetching technique in the architecture to capture observation in body area networks, which is BNA. BN. The design has been proven to be useful in remote and con conjunct uh, pandemic location where wireless or, or internet connectivity is a big issue or where the risk of COVID-19 spreading is high. Moving on, I'm going to an introduction. The Australian Department of Defense is investigating the establishment of the drone-based COVID-19 health and respiratory monitor platform for the health of monitoring and detection of the infections and the respiratory condition. Drone is an air vehicle that flies like conventional aircraft but does not have a pilot. An unnamed aerial vehicle is referred to as a platform. Payload when is external hardware or embedded system are used to it. When a payload is attached to the platform, it forms a drone that may be used more effectively and accurately in the range of applications. Drones are frequently utilized in a current COVID-19 pandemic for things like monitoring, alerts, terminal scanning, medication, food supply, and system changes, among other things. The capabilities of a current drone-based system can be further extended by incorporating features such as social distancing measurements, COVID-19, protein data collecting, and utilizing artificial intelligence, AI, which is thermal imaging and data sanitizing, keep on with the record keeping, and so on. And that's all. Uh, thank you. Okay, so moving on, we'll be presenting on the architecture of the drone that will be used in the smart healthcare system. In this case, the architecture of the drone was purposely designed around the artificial intelligence system. This will be the best approach as the drone will be put in complex situations where it will have to adapt depending on the situations. This makes the drone a self-learning machine that will be able to analyze, compute, and transfer data efficiently. With the help of other systems such as Internet of Things, Internet of Medical Things, and machine learning, Integrated with AI, it helps the drone to learn and adapt to every situation it is put in. Thus, it reduces the percentage of failure. In order to make sure the drone is ready for real-world operation, it is put through a number of complex situations, so it learns the situation and will be ready to make proper decisions when the situation occurs in the real world. Since there is a very low number of drone pilots available, it will be a huge advantage by implementing AI in the architecture as it will not require a pilot to fly the drones. Few of the key systems needed in the specific with containing the pandemic are thermal imaging system, edge network computer system, and drone systems. The thermal imaging systems help the drone to better detect a person by scanning for heat regions 
and at the same time scan an area to check if the social distancing rules are being followed. They have the ability to switch to sensor deployment whenever the thermal imaging is not clear. Moving on, another system will be the edge network and computer system. Edge computing gives a drone an ability to self-process data in real time without the need to send the data over to a bunch of servers. This allows the drone to make quick real-time decisions with faster real-time analysis. The next key system is the drone system. A drone system based on healthcare is the priority as it will be helping us contain the pandemic. Does, it, does the drone have to come equipped with the ability to monitor situation, medicine, delivery, sanitization, and more? So choosing the right sensors or equipment is crucial for the drone. For example, in order for the drone to avoid collision, the radar and LiDAR system is integrated as it gives a better picture of the surrounding compared to a normal camera. So that would be all for architecture. OK, so moving on to the algorithms and how these drones operate in a given situation. So AI based drones actually capture raw data and send it to three different computing units. So one is the edge detect, the fog detect and the cloud computing detect. So AI powered drones are very useful in pandemic ground intelligence collection and also implementation. All these COVID-19 operational statistics that are collected are actually uh, will be efficiently computed only if their algorithms can be managed step by step. So in our system, we actually have eight algorithms in total. Algorithm one is actually the baseline algorithm where it actually covers the entire learning process of, the, of a particular drone where it shares the training data by applying patient monitoring, thermal scanning and image identification towards the system, which will then move on to algorithm number two. So algorithm number two to algorithm number six actually speaks about the collision system or the collision feasibility uh, uh, diagram where we detect how near a drone can actually come towards uh, coming into a collision and then we work on how to mitigate that, uh, that scenario. So algorithm two talks about the, the first level, which is a zone bridge, a zone based approach, which doesn't allow any collision based on a collision feasibility area, as mentioned before. Here, a single layer fixed zone transfer is actually considered for operation. In algorithm number three, we have the zigzag movement pattern in zone transferring. So where a, zone, a drone enters and exits based on its own zigzag pattern, which is specified towards its working, uh, its working zone. For algorithm number four, we look at a current zone, uh, a drone in a current zone where we collect, actually collect the index values or the data of how the drone moves and map it uh, based on latitude and longitude to, to avoid any small distance collisions. Moving on to algorithm number five, we have the single layer drone movement strategy where the application of algorithm number two, three, and four are actually uh, supplemented towards multiple drones. Uh, where they follow a parallel entry uh, point into the zones. And then this can be further explained in an algorithm number six, where we have multi-layered zone transfer systems for multiple, uh, multiple drones. So the top layer and the uh, operation layer are actually separated. So the top layer is uh, considered the zone transfer layer, and the bottom layer is where the operation layer lies for operations based on COVID-19 specifications. Moving on to algorithm number seven and eight. This is where we get into the actual uh, drone monitoring um, a particular um, public uh, situation or public uh, geographical location where algorithm number seven actually ensures person to person symmetrical distance uh, in any situation where algorithm eight further expands this uh, this, uh, uh, this, this application where we talk about the distance between two people, but in a randomly distributed population, uh, it based in a specific geographical location. So making sure that the distances between those two people are symmetrical, given a large population and a large uh, study area. So then moving on to the next part, which will be taken over by Yogis, and he'll be doing the simulation and the outcome section of our presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you to Mr. Palren. Uh, we are wasting any time. I'll be, I'll be moving on to the simulation and this outcome of this specific project. So first we'll be looking about thermal corona combat drone. So 
it is a drone where it's it is more to scanning this thermal and then and it's you know it can fly to the uh, specific balcony and then you can just scan them by uh, using specific drone cell so now we will jump into this outcome so uh, what really uh, brought la so this testing was took place in india and it came up with a very good result because it was very effective in scanning all these people sanitizing and to fly all over place in, in a very big amount of area because this specific drone can actually fly high and it can send and it can scan the whole area and it can even scan people also so this specific simulation is more to thermal so now next we'll be moving on to our next simulation which is called as a drone system using any logic so this drone system is used basically more to sanitizing the space by monitoring regularly so it it is a drone where it can always fly every time to monitor the place and to sanitize it all the time and it is also used to um just to see people's movement here and there so that it can be monitored time to time to see whether people are uh, adhering to their social distancing or not so below is the table of this outcome so the testing of this analogic uh, drone showed in a tabulation where, where it was a very successful one because uh, the below graph is actually a comparative analysis of the time required to sanitize this area so if we if we see means like short time it is it is required to cover short uh, to 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 cover small areas so the more as the time increases the area of the drone have to cover also increases the i mean the amount of drone is needed also increases accordingly to the area small area few drones big area many drones and the time also requires many so this is the uh basic uh, outcome of it so now next we'll be moving on to the third one which is a brain based uh, sorry a drone based uh, about sanitizing system which is using our jam sim simulator so basically what is this uh, this drone is used for this drone is used as a strategy uh, to complete the area under observation at the maximum and a good model of value so below is the three the three diagram or three uh, tabulation is showed for this outcome so the so the testing of this jam sim uh, it uh, it has uh, jam in a very good way and it signal transmission time from the ground transmitted to the to the drone receivers so they so there's actually three the first one is again signal uh, duration from the drone against the, the simulation time how long it needed um, to simulate this drone and the second one it is the number of drone is used against the simulation time so how many drones we use uh, will result in the simulation time obviously if let's say we use many drones obviously the time is required more so and, and the last one is uh, the mbps the 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 speed of it against the the, uh, the simulation in time so basically this is the three out of thing and it came up in a very good result so thank you so much now i'll be giving to mr parman again to do the calculation okay to <clears throat> to conclude this uh, uav based uh, healthcare system in india has been a monumental success they use a very simple framework that actually gathers, gathers data by using variable sensors movement sensors that are deployed in targeted areas and are sent in for processing so to further summarize it is actually the edge computing part of this uh, entire machine movement throughout from the beginning till the end starts with the edge computing as mentioned before where it actually proposes a drone collision resistant strategy while the fog and cloud computing actually builds the patient profiles that will be further associated with uh, tackling the covid-19 pandemic these drones can actually cover uh, that large distance in a very short period and uh, this actually holds true especially in uh, larger areas such as india and as a side note to actually improve upon this uh, implementation on this study a more compact drone design is actually required for completing smaller tasks but which require higher fidelity such as indoor imaging like the drone entering uh, someone's house to uh, with their permission of course to detect uh, their temperatures and then to detect their social distancing stand standards and practices at home while uh, sanitization work and real time work 
that that takes place uh, outside where there's environmental factors, there are social factors, a more compact design on drones is actually a must when it comes to this. And then moving on to the references, we actually took three references. One was titled containing the COVID-19 pandemic with drones. Similarly, with two other uh, PDF articles, the bulk of our our research is actually done using the third article titled a drone based network system uh, for future generated generation computer systems. OK, so that concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, very good afternoon to. OK, thank you very much for group number four. So please uh, available yourself. Open your camera, please. Okay, we have Pavan Kumar, Loga Prakasun, Navin Varma, and Yogesh Varen. All right, so um, based on your projects, I saw the word of wearable sensor. So wearable sensor. Okay, so basically, what is the wearable sensor? How does uh, this sensor, the wearable sensor, can be integrated with other components for combating, for combating uh, COVID-19? I repeat again, what is the uh, wearable sensor and how this sensor can be integrated, how the sensor can be integrated with other components for combating COVID-19. So maybe I want to ask who? Maybe Loga Pakrasun. Okay, please uh, unmute your microphone. So for sensor in the, in the drone, we have to use a AI method to make sure the sensor working to capture the uh, heat temperature feature. So in order that we need we need to use the complete uh, architecture because for the drone the architecture is based uh, is we use for the sensor also. So if the sensor is uh, very much bigger to take the temperature uh, image. The question is, what is the wearable sensor? Wearable sensor. I, I, for the variable sensor, used to the, for variable sensor also, we, we need to use a different type of drone, sir. Different type of drone? Ah, uh, drones for because it, it needs a different variables of a uh, sensor need a different type of architecture of drone. Okay. So, so how does this sensor can be integrated? Can be integrated with other components to combat the COVID-19? Uh, how this sensor, the wearable sensor, can be integrated with other components to combat the COVID-19? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, guys, uh, thank you. You can leave. All right. So, uh, okay, give me five minutes and we will come back because I want to show your result. Thank you.